this morning. So glad. Thank you. Thank you for that. I feel better already. Hey, would you uh, would you pray with us this morning? Father, it's so good to be in your house this morning during this season. Um, just pray that this morning it would be all about you. It's in your son's name we pray. Would you stand with us, please? darkness when hope was restored where was despair when my God split the shores where was defeat when the Lord took a breath he stood in power by the grave that he left nowhere 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 is the fear when my King is raised nowhere 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 was the doubt when where was the sorrow when dry bones arose? Where was the pain when the sick was arose? Where was the disgrace when the king laid to rest? He was sin by the grace he possessed. Nowhere, nowhere. Nowhere is the fear when my king is rich. Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere was the doubt when my king conquered death. Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere is the fear when my king is rich. Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere was the doubt when my king conquered death. Could you see beyond the grave? If love found my soul worth dying for, how wonderful, how glorious, my Savior's cross, victorious, my chains are. Did is paid from 
dead to life, grace to grace. If heaven now owns that Great is the hope that lives in you. The passion that tore through heaven and earth. The promise that rolled back death and its stone. That freedom is worth the life. Where is my sin? Where is my shame? If love paid it all to have my heart, how wonderful, how glorious, my Savior scars, victorious, my chains are gone. morning everybody it's so good to see your faces on this wonderful second sunday second sunday of advent so glad that you're here visiting with us whether you're here in the congregation or online visiting with us we're so glad that you are here i have a blessing i would like to read for our prayer it's it's a kate bowler blessing and um if you haven't been seeing we have a blog, I mean a, a, a pod, a, yeah, coming out, Holy Roast, and one that will be on it soon is with Kate Bowler, right? So, please bow your heads with me. God, we long for peace. We, we have already drawn our blades. We are at war with each other and within ourselves. Our world, the evidence of our folly, on full display, we waste away in quarries dug by our own hands. O oh, Jesus, come to us, come suddenly into the center of our deepest need. Come swiftly into the chaos of our conflict and distress. Establish the peace order of your rule, not ours. Your kingdom, not ours. Reign with sovereignty in our hearts which refuse correction, reign with power over all that is ungovernable, reign with mercy over our communities, our neighborhoods, and our nation. Blessed are we who look to you, Jesus, to be the change we cannot enact. Come, Prince of Peace, from our bleeding world. Amen. Now stand and greet each other around you.
In days when God's people longed for peace, Isaiah declared, Comfort, O comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her team term, that her penalty is paid, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Isaiah 41. We who gather today also seek comfort and peace, yet we are unsatisfied with ideas of peace that tell us to keep quiet and go with the flow. We long for real peace, true peace, just peace. We light these candles as signs of God's shocking hope and just peace. May they be beacons calling us to repent and to live the good news of Jesus Christ as we wait and watch and labor for the day when all people can gather together to worship and glorify God. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Colin. I'm blessed to be the youth and children's pastor here at E. I'm Maverick. Um, I'd like to invite all of our kiddos forward for children's moment. Well, I have a few announcements. What's up? Give me high fives. Give me high fives. I want to thank everyone who let me go visit my parents and who let me go watch some of my closest friends get married over the past two weeks. So thank you for everyone who stepped in for me and stepped up and was able to lead these awesome kiddos and then also uh, we just had our youth overnighter last night um, so as i am waking up this morning i'd also like to thank everyone who volunteered who donated food and who came out to help and so my last announcement is not only are we done with youth activities now we're leading into the children's ones this week and so we'll have adventure night this friday from 5 to 8 p.m it is from our three-year-olds all the way to fifth graders and so if our three-year-olds please make sure they are potty trained um, I, do ask that, and I, I want to emphasize that. But it'll be full of crafts, full of games, and, and great movies, and lots of pizza and food. And so, um, if you want to show up, that'll be on Friday from 5 to 8 p.m. Are y'all ready? We're all going to sit down right here. Yeah, sit down with me. Yeah. Okay, so what story are we going through right now? What season are we in? Yeah. December. We are in December. Good job. What else? There's a special, a special word I'm looking for. No, not that one. Not that one. It starts with an A. Yeah? You want to say it again? Advent. There you go. Advent. Yes, we're in the season of Advent. And so Advent is us celebrating the birth of Jesus. <laughs> you want to sit next to my friend right here? Thank you. Yeah, and so this month we're celebrating the journey that Joseph and Mary are taking to Bethlehem. And so what's important about that journey is that it's a very very long journey that they are taking. Have you all ever traveled a really, really far place away? Have you all ever been stuck in the car so long that you just wanted to go run around? Yeah. yeah. North Carolina is a very far place to go. Yeah. And so the last week I was traveling to Louisiana in a car and it was a 12 hour drive. I can't handle 12 hour drives anymore, not as an adult. But what I was grateful for during that is that I was able, after reading all of the books I brought and all the homework I was doing along the way, I was able to look around. I was able to look at the, the beautiful nature that is happening across the South, able to go look at the, the swamps and the forest, able to talk to my friends. And at one point when we're driving to Louisiana, we hit a thunderstorm. <gasps> oh no. And as we hit the thunderstorm, the car just started shaking, going back and forth. Can everyone shake real quick? It started shaking, and the rain was coming down in waves, and water was going everywhere. And my friends and I, we decided to do the safe thing and pull over. But after 12 hours of driving, you just want to make that last little bit of the way. You want to finally make it to your destination. So we kept driving. And so as the car, and we're moving along, and the rain's coming down, and we're all 
fearful for our life and we've turned off the music in the car because we really need to focus. And we finally get to our destination and the thunderstorm stops. That's unfortunate, right? Right? I still had to go through the thunderstorm to make it to my friend's house, to make it to the destination. And so Jesus and Mary, maybe they didn't have a thunderstorm, but they had animals. They had to worry about the food they bring and the water they brought. And so finally, when they make it to Bethlehem, God has provided them there. God has given them the resources, the, the blessings to make it there. And now what, what's wonderful about God's graciousness is that it doesn't just stop there. Is that when we come to the birth of Jesus, and what we'll be talking a little bit more about today, is that Jesus provides for us away from evil, away from sin, where we can live in peace and joy and share that with others. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about God's graciousness, a little bit more how we can maybe decorate some trees, eat some yummy snacks. We'll also talk about how we can share that graciousness with others. Does this sound good? Yeah? Would you all want to bow your heads in prayer with me? Thank you. Maybe. Dear God, thank you for these wonderful kiddos. Thank you for this amazing day and the story of the birth of Jesus Christ, of getting us through thunderstorms, of getting us from one destination to the other. We thank you for lots of energy and lots of joy. And we thank you that you have taken us through the storm. And so I pray that as we go into our children's shirts, we are able to, to see your graciousness, not only in the stories of the Bible, but in our own experiences. And that way we may be able to continue to share that love with everyone. We say all of this in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said, amen. amen. Okay, and if you want to meet Chuck at the back. Good morning. My name is Megan Romero, and I am excited to lead you all in prayer this morning. Before I do that, there are multiple ways to give at Watkins. You can use Venmo or Church Center on our website. Also, the offering plate will go around soon. We use those things, like everyone else, to light our building so we have places where youth can stay up all night. We have, um, we have lots, of, lots of places we help, like abroad. We have a church in Costa Rica we sponsor and a lot of things in our own area. While I'm talking about the things we do in our area, there's a tree out there in the narthex that is beginning to look a lot like it's ready for snow. We collect hats, scarves, and gloves, and we give them to people around our city that need them. So when you're getting ready for your Christmas and you're out at the store, if you could pick up something and put it on the tree, that would be awesome. Now, if you could just bow your heads with me and pray. Dear Lord, may we see in our neighbor a person worthy of love and respect. May we recognize ourselves and our enemies. May we never lose hope in the promise of peace and never forget it begins with us. May the tender mercy of your love break into the world and turn us upside down. In, in Jesus' name, amen. sinners poor and needy weak and wounded sick and sore Jesus ready stands to save you full of pity love and power Come ye thirsty, come and welcome God's free bounty, glorify true belief and true repentance, and every grace that brings you now. I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms. And in the arms of my dear 
Savior. Oh, there are ten thousand charms. Come ye weary, heavy laden, lost and Amen. Thank you, Ben. Can you give the band a round of applause? Please thank you all for leading us. Well, good morning. We're glad you're here, whether you are here in person or joining us online. We're grateful for your presence here in the space. If you are online, we encourage you to comment. And uh, there's a connect card on the front page of that, too, if you want to let us know you're here and ways that you can pray for us. Uh, pr we can pray for you as well. Um, well, there are many ways that we are able to engage in, in living into light and to life during the Advent season. Um, and so thank you, Megan, for, for bringing up the warming tree. That's uh, one of the coolest things to fill up throughout the next couple of weeks. And so if you haven't brought anything yet, there's still plenty of time to do that. And we also sponsor a couple of JCPS families. So if you'd like to sign up, there's a sign up genius in your emails on our Facebook group. If you're not a part of that Facebook group, um, let us know and we can get you in there. Uh, that ways that we are able to share gifts of joy for families who may not have that during the season. And so for that, uh, it's a great opportunity for us to give. Uh, we are continuing our sermon series called Prepare the Way, where we're talking about the life of John the Baptist. So last week we talked about John's parents. John's parents' names were... Oh, that buzz is, ba is gone. That was nice. That was like a release right there. So John's parents were named what? Do you remember? You are, okay, that's a good excuse. There's online worship, Dr. Tracy. Uh, so Zechariah and Elizabeth, right? So those were his parents. And we talked about what it meant for them to get a surprise, right? That at their old age, they were able to give birth to a son and then gave this long explanation of what that son that will eventually be called John the Baptist will do uh, for the years to come. So today we'll switch and swift gears a little bit where we'll talk about Zechariah. And Zechariah is able to pen a song that I will not sing for you, but I'll read for you in a second um, as we come together. So before we open up that word, let us go to God in prayer. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we are grateful. We're grateful that you're here in this space, that you are able to lead us and guide us, especially during this season of Advent. As we prepare our, our hearts, as we prepare our lives for the coming of the Christ child once again into this world. So God, may that same spirit that was there at the birth of Christ, same spirit that was there as the birth of John through Elizabeth, would be here in the reading of your word. That we may hear something new, that we may hear something fresh that we know only comes from you, O oh God. That we may not only come to intellectually understand who you are, as important as that may be 
but that we may come to experience you from the inside out. We ask all of this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ and all God's beloved children said, amen. So today we'll continue in the Gospel of Luke, just a few paragraphs where we left off, left off last week. So this is Luke, the first chapter, verses 67 through 80. John's father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied these words. Bless the Lord God of Israel because he has come to help and has delivered his people. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us and his servant David's house, just as he said through the mouths of his holy prophets long ago. He has brought salvation from our enemies and from the power of all those who hate us. He has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and remembered his holy covenant, the solemn pledge he made to our ancestor Abraham. He has granted that we would be rescued from the power of our enemies so that we could serve him without fear and holiness and righteousness and God's eyes for as long as we live. You, child, will be called a prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. You will tell his people how to be saved through the forgiveness of their sins. Because of our God's deep compassion, the dawn from heaven will break upon us to give light to those who are sitting in darkness and the shadow of death to guide us on the path of peace. The child grew up, becoming strong in character. He was in the wilderness until he began his public ministry to Israel. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, it's kind of neat this Christmas season. Christmas season for me is a little bit different. Cooper is getting a little bit older, and he is starting to kind of acknowledge different things happening around him, right? I mean, it's still kind of the big wow of the lights, and um, we we had to lay to rest our our Frosty that was in our front yard. Um, He went into the eternal rest is what we had to tell Cooper. He moved back to this to the North Pole. That's what that is now in his life. And now we have a new Santa, if you were at our open house on Friday night, that, that he loves and adores. But one of the things that has been fun throughout the last two weeks is our preschool practicing for the big Christmas program right? I mean, I was telling Brenda was at our early service, our preschool director, and she has those kids working night and day on this program, right? I mean, they are just rehearsing and rehearsing and practicing and practicing. We have teachers and assistants in here, they know, and they are just running them through all these songs, and and I'll pop in every now and then as a proud dad, and I also now receive pictures and videos from church members who will send them to me of Cooper sitting front and center of the whole program, um, like he is directing the choir behind him, right? As if he doesn't have a big enough ego as a pastor's kid already, right? But it's it's super cute. I love hearing the songs. I like hearing, uh, watching the children's play. There's something about viewing the Christmas season through the eyes of a child. I don't know if you saw this video this past week, but there's a, been a video going around about a, a kid who finds out the part he's going to play in the upcoming pr- Christmas program. Have you all seen this video? And he, he's British, right? So he has this fantastic accent. And he talks about the role in which he has just been cast for, and he is just ecstatic. So Chris is going to show us the video of that right now. Isn't that awesome? I mean, I just hope they're going to follow this kid on that performance, right? I want to see him perform door holder number three, right? 
It's a classic part as a part of the Christmas story. Can you imagine the, the practices that he has led up to this point? I mean, can you imagine him probably dressed up like a door as he's doing it? And I wonder if he's going over his lines, if he has any lines. I'm not quite sure door holder number three has any lines, but can you imagine? I wonder if he's going to get nervous. I hope there's a follow-up video of it. I wonder if he's going to make sure that that line is memorized if he has one. I wonder if he's going to, if, if, if he's dressed up as a door, if, if he's nervous, he's, he's going to swing the right way in their face, right, as it comes up there. There's a lot of pressure for this little boy in door holder number three. You know, last week we talked about Zechariah, and Zechariah was the priest that was called in to light the incense and the, and the candles in the Holy of Holies. There was only one priest out of 20,000 priests who were selected to do this, and it was his turn to do it. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for Zechariah. And it's at that point an angel shows up to the side. Do you remember that part? An angel shows up to the side of the altar, and he says, Be not afraid, Zechariah. And then he gives Zechariah this, this huge mantra of what's about to happen, right? He tells him, this is how John is going to be born, and here's the miracle that's going to happen. And it goes on and on, this plethora of information. And do you remember Zechariah's response? Zechariah asked for a sign of a sign. He asked this angel, right, Gabriel, who appears in front of him, well, prove it. I don't quite understand what you're saying. I really think you should do it. And do you remember what happens to Zechariah? He's quiet. He is now unable to speak until the birth of his son, John. Imagine that. A preacher, a priest, we do like to talk from time to time, silent and for months until his son, John, is born. So this old priest, and now he, he finally has this, this, this uh, a way to speak. He finally is able to open his mouth. And I like to imagine it's like this extemporaneous holler from this old man yelling all these things about what his son and who God is will do. But probably the tone that's more appropriate and, and, and more responsible to text at this point is not maybe like a dam opening up and a big flood of words coming out when he can finally speak, but this intentional and eloquent song of swords, describing word by word of what is going on. I mean, I, I do wonder, and during those last couple of months, that Zechariah had a lot of time on his hands, and he had a lot of time of silence. Bless you. That was like six. That's, that's impressive. Um, that there, there, He had all this time. It's like a poet or a songwriter working on their words over and over again to make sure each word is, is perfectly in place to mark the moment that something is about to happen. To mark a major time in Elizabeth and his life, and therefore the rest of the world through the debut of his new song for John himself. You know, there's other songs in the Gospel of Luke. I, I encourage you maybe later this afternoon, after your good Sunday noon, Sunday afternoon nap, like I will take, um, you go through from verse one until where we are today. We are in verse six. We're in the 60s, right, of these verses at this point. But each uh, each paragraph almost has a different song. We have Mary's song, which is traditionally read on this Sunday, the Magnificat, and that's a beautiful song of sorts. We also have Simeon's song, in which he, he hears about who Christ is going to be. And he, there's also the song of the heavenly hosts, which is just one verse as a part of it. And so Zechariah contributes after paragraph after paragraph, his own song of sorts in the passage that we just read. And in this song, he praises both who God is, what God has done, and what kind of God will lead them into a good future? It's this beautiful, beautiful prophetic song of sorts. And so the song follows this threefold, this threefold pattern. Most Hebrew songs, if you look even throughout the Psalms, those are songs. There are threefold patterns of what that looks like. And so here are the three forms that come as a part of Zechariah's uh, song in front of us. The first kind of, kind of phrase or, or paragraph, or in musical terms, I'm sure that's something better than what I'm describing, stanza, I don't know, is the first one is that God remains faithful to God's promises. The second one is God's way is not any ordinary way, but a very specific way of salvation. And the last one is God's path is what? Peace. 
So it follows this three-form pattern, which is found in all of Hebrew songs, that God remains faithful to God's promises, that God's way is salvation, and that God's path is peace. It's just at the beginning of this, this song that he talks about the faithfulness of God. Hear this again. He, he starts out as part of his song, Zechariah says, Bless the Lord God of Israel. That is a very uh, Hebrew, Jewish uh, type phrase that you find all throughout the Psalms. Bless the Lord God of Israel because he has come to help and has delivered his people, right? See that, that, that looking back of remembrance of God's faithfulness? He calls us to remember what God has, got, has done. God has raised up a mighty Savior for us in his servant David's house. He's talking about Jesus here, right? And just as he said he would through the mouths of his holy prophets long ago. And, and part of the prophecy says he has shown mercy promised to our ancestors and remembered, there's that word again, his holy covenant, the solemn pledge he made to our ancestor Abraham. So the beginning of this song, uh, Zechariah just keeps coming back over and over again this mantra. Remember. Remember. You know, I, I think we're forgetful people. Would you agree with me? We're forgetful people. We, we have this, and I, and I don't know if it's like just the speed of what we listen to things and how we understand things now. I don't know if it's just the way our brain works, that we're just overworked and we're busy all the time. But I don't know about you, but I can barely remember what I did yesterday, right? I can barely remember what I did this morning to get to this place where I am today. We are forgetful people. So Zechariah keeps coming back and says, this is a new thing. We must remember what God has done. It's, it's a continuation of the Old Testament. It's a continuation of the prophets that came before John the Baptist, who becomes that great prophetic voice to prepare the way in the wilderness for the way of the Lord. So it keeps coming back and back again to say, hey, re remember who we are and remember what kind of God that we serve. Because it's through that remembrance, if we remember how, how God got us through this situation, or how God got us through this pain, or how God got us through this exiled period of our lives, or, or got us through any sort of mourning and grieving that we are in, it's in that that we are able to see how God can use us going forward. It intimately connects the movement of God. But we have to first remember well, how God has been faithful and the promises that God has made. And that is exactly what Zechariah is doing. He's singing a song of remembrance of who God is and what God has done. And one of the movements that he says is, we, this God that we, that we worship, this God isn't some distant God that kind of set things into motion in front of us and then said, good luck, let's see what happens next. You know, how often do we view God that way, though? That we feel like God is, is an uncaring and, and, and really not involved God. That God is somehow up in the cloud somewhere. And God set things into motion, created things, and then sees how this whole thing plays out in front of us. That is not the story that we find throughout the scriptures. Yes, there is a tension of free will that God gives us free choices to move forward. But that doesn't mean that God is distant and God doesn't care. We can swing the pendulum too far either way, can't we? That sure, as my friend Kate Bowler says, I love how Kate Bowler got a, a shout out, um, that everything happens for a reason is a lie that we've come to love, but it's not found in the Bible. So there's that pendulum of God doesn't direct every single thing, that God does give us free will and free choice, but that doesn't mean that God is distant and uncaring. That if we look at the movements of God in our life, if we just take a moment to reflect and to consider that God is there, it says in the scriptures that God gives light to those who sit in darkness, that God gives light to those who find themselves in the shadow of the valley of death, that God raises up a savior in the midst of us because that is the kind of God that God is. That the promises that God has given throughout all of the Old Testament and through the New Testament is the same promises that lives on within you and within me. We just have to remember the faithfulness to God's promise. You see, that's the testimony of sorts. 
That's a testimony that lives throughout the, the stories of scriptures. That's a testimony that, that lives through the stories of Jesus, life, death, and resurrection. It's also the stories that's handed down to the early church. And I think if we just take a moment to remember, we can find that same sort of story in each one of our lives. That anytime we show compassion to somebody, there it is. Anytime we, we practice mercy or we practice uh, forgiveness to somebody who has deeply hurt or harmed us, there it is. That I truly believe we don't need bullhorns on college campuses or parades, but what we need is a deep compassion put out into the world. That is how we remember the faithfulness of God. You know, I talked about the songs that came before. The Magnificat, God, God through, through Mary, sings this deep uh, prophetic song of sorts of the kind of God that, 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 that throughout the Old Testament gives birth through Mary, right? I mean, Mary becomes that, that kind of uh, a vessel of sorts that brings about a traumatic change. And she gives that kind of beautiful song throughout. And Simeon just rejoices at God's salvation of the infant. And Zechariah focuses on that one phrase. It raises up a mighty Savior amongst us. You see, before long, the day's coming that Zechariah's own son will come. He's only a few months, if, if that, old at this point. And, and Zechariah blesses the one who, who does this. And he says, you know what? My son will come and he will make a way where there is no way. And Zechariah says, I'm going to partner with God in that spreading of the good news. And that good news includes the repentance and the forgiveness of sins. The repentance and the forgiveness of sins. I, I think if there's any part of the passage here that's been um, weaponized against other people, it's that one. For the repentance of the forgiveness of sins. And, and I believe that so much so that next week that's what we're going to focus on as a part of John's message. But when we look at just Zechariah's song briefly, we find that it helps us truly focus on the meaning of Advent. Repentance for the forgiveness of sins. What does that mean? That God is birthing something new through Mary. That this new birth changes all of human history. That Jesus administers the forgiveness of sins to all people. That in Jesus' life and his teachings and his death and his resurrection brings about a wholeness and a healing we could not do on our own. That is the true good news of the gospel. So John the Baptist takes upon takes upon that way to reorient as the prophets of old have done reorient the people to a transformative experience and the spoiler to, as a part of this that, that we'll struggle with more so next week than this week is that this prophet really irritates the powers of the world and John, John uh, irritates him so much, spoiler alert, a part of there is that he's eventually thrown into prison and he's beheaded by the king himself. It's grim for our friend John. But at this point, he's a few weeks old, and his father and mother are filled with the hope of a company's new life. It's the hope of a salvation for all people, for Jews and Gentiles, for insiders and for outsiders, for rich and for poor, for the blind and the lame, the tax collectors and the sinners, the women and the men, the young and the old, the Samaritans and the lepers, the lepers and the lawyers and many other people along the way. And Zechariah says, we will wait. We will wait. Because the one who is coming, even the one that comes after my son, is more powerful than he. And the one who has come will bring about that salvation through the forgiveness of sins for all people. Why does that matter? Why does that matter? Part of the, the beauty of this psalm is that Zechariah connects it to human history, right? So we talked about how he's faithful to God's faithful to God's promises. But then another thing that brings about it is, is the passages that connects intimately to the to the ways that that war and peace and violence and hope all are integrated together. What does that mean? 
one of the, the, the verses that I think is so haunting today, and I think it's haunting in that it can become such a focal point for us is this, and it's from the book of Isaiah, and I want us to read this out loud together. I, I think this verse really speaks into where we're at as a people, not just here, but, but all around the world. Let's read this together. The way of peace they do not know, and there is no justice in their paths. The roads they have made crooked, no one who walks in them knows peace. Do you feel that passage? Do you see that passage lived out? In the ways of prophetic, it connects human history, but not just a human history that is contextual in that time, but breathes life into other places. And it's almost as if Zechariah was sitting down reading the scrolls of Isaiah and Zechariah says, I have something to say to this. I have something to a people who are obsessed with warfare. I have a, a, a people who are obsessed with, with justice without peace and peace without justice. I have something to say about that. He says it's because of God's deep what? Compassion. Because of our God's deep compassion, the dawn from heaven will break upon us to give light to those who are sitting in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide us on the path of peace. It's because of God's great, what? Compassion. That we are able to find peace here that we so desperately need. Do you think the world needs a little compassion today? Context matters. And so by the time of, of Luke's gospel, what's happened is the Romans have destroyed the Jerusalem temple. And the news about Jesus is starting to spread out past Palestine to pockets all around the Roman Empire. And in this context, no less than decades before Mary and Elizabeth will give birth to their sons that will change the world, the message of God's peace comes at kind of an end, that there's more people who are practiced at the art of war than the, the craft of reconciliation. And so when you have those two things coming to a head, there is a disruption of sorts, right? There's a disruption when you're obsessed with the warfare and you don't want to really do the hard work of reconciliation that this is where peace comes at the end of the road. That there is a choice of what true peace could look like. And this is how Caesar and the rest of the Roman Empire will come to jail and to execute both John and Jesus. But here's the thing. Here's the thing that you may or may not know. The Gospel of Luke uses the word peace more times than all three Gospels combined. Did you know that? He uses the word peace more than the other three Gospels combined. That it's an intentional movement. That in each process, in each story, in each segue, there is a moment in which there is that peace that is available to all people. There is a moment that there may not be another way, it seems like, in this world. That there may not be, at the end of the road, a choice. That there is only one choice. But, but Luke keeps coming back and back again. That peace, peace is what helps to mend this broken and hurting world. You know, throughout the, the Gospel of Luke, he talks about it. From the beginning, it says, hey, that there's a, a God who will guide their way to peace. Zechariah kind of, kind of picks it up right in the beginning. And then Jesus starts preaching about that there is a gift granted when people kneel before in faith before Jesus. And then there's a, another phrase that says, hey, there's a message of God's upcoming kingdom that is bursting into this world. And that kind of bursting into the world, well, it's not a bursting of violence, but it's a bursting of shalom of peace and wholeness that makes the road clear. That's a way of heaven breaking forth on earth in the Messiah. Yet yeah, that's how the Messiah works in this world. That the announcement by Zechariah about John the Baptist is not just a beautiful song about a boy being born into the world, but it's rather a, a remembrance of God's faithfulness, of a way of salvation and a way of grace and peace where there seems like no other way. This is who God is and how God works. One more story for you and I'll be done. 
it, it reminds me of a, a story uh, that happened in, in South Africa. And so many, many of you are familiar with Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Archbishop Desmond Tutu passed away, I think, in, in what, 2021? So it's just been a few years, which is incredible how history uh, kind of escapes you after a while. It doesn't seem like that long. And there's a, a story uh, about him in which there's uh, all these anti-apartheid apartheid, uh, rallies happening around the country. And, and the, the government is shutting all of those rallies down. So it makes it illegal for the anti-apartheid rallies to happen. And so Archbishop Tutu goes to this uh, cathedral of sorts. Does anyone know the name of this cathedral? St. George's. St. George's Cathedral. It's actually where he, he was put in wake in, in, there in Cape Town. And he said he was going to hold a, a religious ceremony rather than a political rally. They kind of come hand in hand, don't they? Anyways, he, he says, I'm going to hold this, uh, this worship service of sorts in St. George's Cathedral. And so they have thousands and thousands of people gathering into this, this, this place. Thousands of, of worshipers from all over South Africa start coming into St. George's Cathedral. And, and it also attracts hundreds and hundreds of police who surround the cathedral, um, bearing arms. They have all their guns and their shields out. And so Desmond Tutu, the story goes, he starts preaching uh, the gospel and people started entering. And, and then all of a sudden the policemen started to come in and they, the policemen, if you can imagine it, lined every single uh, place of the wall all around Archbishop Desmond Tutu as he preached. And they're all holding their guns out. And, and some of them start to take notes in their journals, specifically what, what, the, what Tutu is preaching about. And they start making notes. Um, as it goes, and it's very threatening, and, and Desmond Tutu is just unintimidated by it. He's unintimidated by it. And it's at one point in his sermon while he's preaching, he, he stops. And he turns and he looks at the police officers who are lining the walls, and he says, you're powerful. You're very powerful. But you are not God's. And I serve a God who cannot be mocked. So since you have already lost, I invite you to come and join the winning side. It's powerful, isn't it? And the whole crowd erupted at that point who were in the pews and they all cheered and they went into more songs and dancing in the pews in Cape Town. I don't know if the story doesn't say if any police officers joined in. I'm not sure. But there is something powerful. There's something powerful about bringing joy and peace and justice in the moment of that. When people are so vehemently choosing to be against one another in very violent ways. There's some stories that, that people even came in with like flogging marks on their backs as they walked into that worship service. That it's in moments critical moments in which we must seek justice. Yes, we must seek peace, but that is all through the same movement that we can't separate them. And for some reason, the human condition keeps coming back and coming at odds to where we just can't find a way or a path forward together. So we grind each other down. We use violent ways to show that we are the tougher or the, the more right. Archbishop Tutu says, you are not gods. You're very powerful, but you've already lost. Maybe it's time to join the winning side. Let's pray about that. Oh God, we are grateful. We are grateful that no matter who we are, what we've done, or, or where we come from, you call us your beloved child. And that we are born into this world as a loving human being. We are born to this world just like John and Jesus through a mother. We are born into this world as a people who are, are anointed by holiness of a God who loves us so much. And some days we just get it wrong. Some days we, we choose the wrong path. Some days we, we find this in, in both a, a national and global perspective. We find each other warring at each other's hearts and lives. And we just don't know how to get on the other side of it. 
God, we praise you for, for being a God who makes a way when there is no way. We praise you that even in the wilderness, even the dark nights of the soul, even in, in our moments of desperation or hopelessness, that you are that light. That you bring about a, a beautiful reconciliation into this world. And that you call people like us to be that agent, to be that proclaimer, and we use words when necessary. Help us to do that. Support us and affirm us and, and push us into your good future that we may face it unafraid. We ask all of this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ and all God's beloved children said, Amen. Would you stand and sing with us? All my words fall short I've got nothing new How could I express All my gratitude I could sing these songs as I often do and Every song must end And you never do So I throw my hands up And praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a for a king except for a heart sing hallelujah hallelujah I've got one response I've got just one My arms stretch wide. I will worship you. So I throw my hands up, praise you again and again. I'm
throw my hands up and praise you again and again. So all that I have is a hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it's not much, nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart sing Hallelujah Hallelujah We have a couple uh, Christmas Eve services coming up just right around the corner. Can you believe it? So I encourage you, we'll have 11 o'clock a.m. Uh, contemporary service here led by the band, uh, more contemporary style. It will still have candlelight at 11 a.m. It'll be okay. Um, and communion at that, where all are welcome to partake in that. And there will also be a 6 o'clock, uh, tr- more traditional uh, organ, piano, candlelight, communion at 6 o'clock. And then after the 6 o'clock, there will actually be a, a fellowship reception with Chris playing some piano music um, that night. And so we do encourage you to come. And, and what else? are you supposed to do you think invite somebody to come with you and so next week we'll be receiving all those wonderful invite cards i know you've been looking forward to um, to hand out to folks that that need uh, a little hope and a little light this year i think we can all name people in our lives that we can invite to come and to join with us to hear about the message of a gospel of peace that changes the world so i encourage you to pray about that i received this benediction this morning now go In the name and the power and the peace of Jesus Christ, as a people who know and can remember the story of a God making a way in the wilderness and continues to make a way in the wilderness of our hearts and our lives and our world even today. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace, my friends.